Good morning. It's Michael Lipinski again. Continuing on with our uh, informative interaction, I want to continue uh, discussing the building information modeling endeavor that uh, either I or we or you and I are discussing privately. In any event, moving on to the next series of chapters, we're going to be exploring the user interface uh, today. Lickety split. Um, Ace makes waste, so let's uh, let's get started exploring the user interface and organizing projects. After more than a decade in the architectural engineering and construction (AEC) industry, what is this Revit software continues to be unique in its combination of powerful features and ease of use. Revit may not be the absolute best tool to design and document every imaginable building type, but its features and function makes the make the vast majority of production tasks much more efficient and accurate. Revit is a completely bi-directional, multi-user working environment. Unlike other 2D computer-aided drafting, CAD, or 3D building information modeling BIM tools, instead of talking about layers and vectors, we'll be using terms such as projects, components, and parameters, along with tools such as, such as a wall, doors, and floors. The concepts and terminology should seem familiar to you if you have experience in the building industry. However, Transitioning to them can be a daunting task if you're more familiar with drafting terms than construction. This chapter provides an overview of the Revit interface UI, as well as the key aspects of data organization within a project. And again, we got to relax, right? Isn't that the key that I discussed with you earlier? We have to relax. Rome wasn't built in a day, right? Rome wasn't built in a day. This is a complex platform, complex instrument. You can't just pick it up. Some folks can. Some folks can't grasp it. Some folks get angry at you because they can't grasp it. They'll get angry at you. <laughs> just be prepared for that. All right, so as we explore further and we take our time uh, learning nonchalance, uh, we're going to continue on at our pace, right? Rushing is probably the worst thing you can do. Unless, of course, you're pledging a fraternity or a sorority, then that's just something else. All right, so as we grow together as a team, we'll start to understand more about the process. What's going on out there? What's the key to this? How do we integrate a project and bring more users and more stakeholders into the mix to alleviate some of their workload and expedite the processes entailed? So understanding the user interface. The user interface is based on the, the Windows ribbon framework. That is also found in software applications such as Microsoft Office. Within Rabbit, you will find many commands and tools that use similar dialog boxes and workflows. For example, you will not find disparate dialog boxes for door properties versus window properties. Persistence of tool location is another key to increased usability. Even though tools remain contextually exposed or hidden, the majority of them can be found in the same place relative to the overall user interface. As you're learning the interface, keep in mind that the interface presents a tooltip for every element. The tool has two stages. The first stage, which appears when you first mouse over the tool, provides the name as well as an option to find out more information from the help menu by pressing the F1 key. Most tooltips provide a second stage that gives you an additional description about what the tool is typically used for, in some cases a video. A new user can learn a lot just by mousing around or mousing over various parts of the interface. Now do that. A lot of this nomenclature is going to be foreign to you. So the key uh, that I had found uh, was to pay attention to the instructions. Now, when you're hovering over the, this plethora of tools and you hover over them, there, there's going to be lots of words that you don't know. So the key to this is vocabulary. 
You're going to need to learn the words. If you don't understand a word in the software, then look it up. Learn what it is and see then if it makes more sense so that you can apply that tool using the component that you're given. If you're authorized, and if you subscribe to one, this line of reasoning, and two, one of the software package itself, professionally, it costs money to stream it in any event. A new user could learn a lot by just mousing around. Now, you have the ability to access all three disciplines of the Revit Software Suite, Architecture, Structural, and MEP. This functionality is addressed in getting to know the ribbon. You know the ribbon? They cut, you know, those politicians. First shovel in the ground, all that. <laughs> when you learn the ribbon. All right. So you win a, you win a ribbon, you know. Big sales. Lots of ribbons. There are lots of ribbons to learn. You got to remember something. We're existing within a society. It's a civilized society. So there's there's more to this than just iterative forms and manipulative models. This is an art and a science, all wrapped up in one, with a hint or a suggestion of theology. Architecture is the study of space, how much time we have, what we can get done with what little time we have. We spoke about this in previous chapters. So what I'd like to do is show you the interface a little more in depth. Now, this figure I have on the screen shows the Revit user interface. To illustrate, illustrate some of the project views, the different views, I've tiled four view types, plan, uh, a cover sheet, and I even included a, a camera still of a shaded, consistently colored reception desk. Now, therein, you can see there's more to this that meets the eye. Now, before I go any further, it's prudent to note that in your in the course of studying this again you'll you'll be learning new vocabulary words to add to your repertoire of your million, million dollar vocabulary but in addition to that you're going to learn that you're going to have to do some research on your own again Rome wasn't built in a day and this is going to take a lot for you to comprehend it doesn't mean you can't it just, mean that, it just means that there's going to be a lot of effort on your part that you have to put into it. And if you don't, if you're not prepared for that, then maybe this isn't the course for you. You're going to have to put in a lot of effort. I didn't get this far resting on my laurels. Now, I can make a million videos, and I have made a whole bunch. And you can hope that you can find them and hope that it fits into the, your particular location on this course and where you are at in your, your, your learning of this, uh, your, what you're capable of doing right now. So I want to jump ahead. I, I want to keep it simple, stupid. I want to, there's a trick to this, I think. After doing it for so long, after performing a lot of the instruction, seeing the, the, the audience and my, my target audiences, I've noticed a few things along my way that you may not pick up, you know, in the office. Um, you have to see from both sides of the, that's what I'm looking for. You have to see it from both sides. You have to see it from 54th floor of Penn Plaza, corner office, down to picking things out of a garbage can. You know, it's a rich man, poor man scenario. Get with the programmer or get left behind. So before I go any further, I wanted to just stop there and let you digest a little bit of this because there's a lot. There's a lot, especially if you're new. And who knows where you fit in? Are you a MEP designer, MEP engineer? Are you an owner? Are you a student? 
Are you an electrician, carpenter, plumber, uh, a mechanical contractor? Are you a mechanical engineer? Are you an artist? Are you a Photoshop, uh, graphical artist? There's so many players that fit into the going, it fit into this. Are you a real estate agent? Are you a leasing agent? Uh, are you uh, are you this, are you city hall? Are you are you performing inspections? Are you uh, coordinating projects on your own through uh, secondary governmental agencies? So much to this, so many players. How can you even think that you can uh, organize it? Well, let me give you a little tip. The Egyptians did it, and they didn't have Revit. You know, Easter Island has statues on it. Do you think they use Revit for that? It's an inclined plane. It's lots of things. But again, I'll reiterate it. There's a lot that's new. And some didn't know. Sometimes I feel like I'm still being sequestered. <laughs>